<laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, guys, welcome back. It is uh, episode 45, day 46 though. Thank you so much for allowing me to have a day off yesterday. It was fantastic. Um, yeah, I had a, a first day in, in 40, basically my 45th day was the first day off. No weekends, yeah, it's great. Um, I, didn't, I didn't do the sensible thing. You have a drink. Mm. Oh, darling. Yeah. <laughs> we had we had we had uh, we had a really good time. It was just Laura and I. We went and stayed up at um, at Lofty House. It was it was beautiful. It was so really really beautiful. That. And thank you so much uh, to the guys that organised that. Uh, Max Mason, big uh, shout out to you uh, regarding that because yeah, wow, you get to work at an amazing place. That is very cool. Um, but we are back uh, and straight on to the comments. Who was number one? Justin Hess again. So. Does Justin revert, I want to know, this is a question out to you guys, does Justin revert back to day one streak because we missed a day? Or is he literally at day, I want to say 16, 17? Justin, are you, uh, are you, are you, are you counting? Uh, cause... I think regardless, that's carryover champ status. It's carry, yeah, it's carryover champ status. Come yep, on down. Absolutely. Uh, Terry, this is, this is Jay. Everyone, this is Jay. Hello. Jay, thank you so much for joining us. Jay, uh, I don't, I don't want to take, take the shine off, off your own introduction. But first, please, would you like a glass of wine? I would love a glass of wine. Don't now you've brought some wine. Yes, these are some wines I think we can try. Uh, not particularly for tasting or sniffing or smelling, just to just, enjoy. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what wine's for, right? And I think we um, might have might have actually tried this on uh, uh, one of the earlier episodes. Um, I don't think so. This is seventeen. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. This is the previous it's vintage. Ooh. So, I'm had, looking forward um, to this. I had one. I had one left. It was one of my favourite wines of that year. Uh, closely followed by Handful that, that Travis made, and particularly delicious. Yeah, I love this wine. Um, so this, is such a good one. this this particular iteration, 17, was much more exposed to oxygen, so yep. uh, has that real nutty sort of Jura-esque feeling to it, which only sort of Setting transcended. Setting favourite words. Yeah. Um, so Jay, mm. son of Dot drinks. Yeah. But you've come from a, an amazing background, though. Because I remember having, by far, one of the best nights out in Adelaide ever. Darling. It was a golden boy. Stop it. It was a golden boy. And you were amazing. We had you lots were... of fun times there. I reckon you came back a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah, seriously. And the fact that, and that's, that's the other thing, to be recognised. Mm. And it's not, it's not like I'm out every day wearing, wearing the big red hoodie. These are only a recent invention. Um, but it was just, I don't know, it was just the concept of, uh, of service and having fun yeah. during service. And something like a bit of a common thread that, that you actually bring across everything that you do is, is it's outrageous. Everything that you do seems to be like outrageously outrageous. amazing fun. Outrageous. That's outrageous. Word. Bombastically <laughs> fun. <laughs> I think bombastic takes a little bit too. <laughs> yeah. I think outrageous is just perfect. But right now you're doing something that I find um, uh, obviously challenging, but also incredible. Like you're you are telling the stories for so many amazing small producers, mm. and one that I'm actually quite familiar with. Not very familiar with his wines, but um, uh, Travis was the person that gave me my first sort of gig in Adelaide. I love that at uh, at Cork Wine Cafe. Uh, what it was a man. amazing, and what amazing place. Work Amazing place, I miss it dearly. Yeah. Um, and it was one of the stalwarts, I think, of natural wine back in the day. To see the quality that this guy's putting out, and we've blind tasted Travis's stuff uh, on this show for a number of like a number of times, where I've completely gotten it incorrect. Mm. And that's not to say anything about Travis. I just hadn't tried the wine before. But we were thinking like, you know, some of the the actual sort of what we call the originals, the OGs of the natural wine scene. We're like, oh, this is clearly one of theirs. Mm. It's not. It's Travis. Yeah, just... I, I totally prefer that you got them wrong because I think when you taste wine, uh, I don't think you can ever really pick it unless you uh, have fully understood the wine. And I don't want people to understand the wine because that's the half the enjoyment, right? The fact that you're exploring something and talking about it with someone else, that's, that's the fun bit. Totally, totally. And I think it's also the, the, you know, the, the realm of the natural winemaking movement itself, speaking more closely to the soil, treating, you know, and obviously there's a myriad of different ways that, that obviously that, that's evolved mm. in recent years. How for you, I mean, do you, do you, are you, are, would you term yourself like a natural wine distributor? Uh, I, I think you've asked me that question on purpose particularly because <laughs> I think I've been outspoken about this before. And actually, yeah. the reason that you've asked me to come on the show probably is because I'm going to say some outrageous things. I want it! <laughs> um, and I think most of the winemakers that I work for will probably disagree with me, but that's the, the nature of a beautiful relationship. Mm. If you can disagree and challenge each other's thoughts, 
that you've got a real winner on your hands there because without that there is no diversification, there is no interest. No growth. No There's growth. no growth at all. But I, I would staunchly um, negate the use and propagate um, the, 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 that natural uh, is a, a misused term. I think mm -hmm. if you, and I think this conversation is a little bit of a boring one, but um, to have it with you is quite entertaining. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. Most likely because I'll probably turn it on your head and ask you a couple of questions <laughs> later on. No, no, please, and absolutely, and, and I welcome but, but, all of but it. Na but natural, I think if you're using it as a marketing term, it's just quite misleading. Yeah. Uh, it has no purpose, it has no gratification. I think if you're describing something as nature, we are the furthest thing from natural. And so, yeah. regardless of if you're allowing the bucket to just sit under the grape and fall into the bucket and ferment, and right, then so. drink it, Accidentally, but who made the bucket? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so this, the, the, there, the is, there is, is a line, that's, and, and that, I think the thing that the issue for a lot of people when it comes to the definition of what, what is colloquially being known as natural wine, I actually much prefer a, a, a perhaps a slightly more challenging term, which we don't really use in the wine industry. I think we probably could, which is craft. Okay. Because we talk about craft beer as a you know, a, a distinguishing itself so from industrial sized okay. beer, we, but we never really talk about craft wine. All right. See, my, my issue once again is that these words are uh, fabrications of the sale of wine and not mm -hmm. indications of expressionism. Mm -hmm. uh, I would use the term living because it, the wines that I sell happen to have no sulfur in them. Uh, and that is more of an example of something which has a living biome in it. So yeah. it's descriptive. Yeah. Um, and I think language at the best of times, this way in which we communicate is quite mm. limited. Especially uh, English. Especially English. If English is one of the worst, yeah. worst it languages. Hunga to Hungarian, perhaps. Japanese. Really just, Japanese, Japanese is like amazing. It's language, language, language communication, it's low bandwidth. Like, mm. for me to get my point across to you, it's language is just good enough for you to understand what I'm saying. Yeah. However, if we were communicating in smell, yes. or, or maybe yeah. we were communicating purely in touch, which we can't anymore. Um, <laughs> At least I know that's um, right. <laughs> yeah, perhaps, perhaps we could explain the transcendental experience that is wine, that is hospitality, that is these, it, these communication uh, uh, modules essentially that we have. We have the ability to express ourselves through wonderful institutions such mm. as hospitality and wine. Yeah. However, we mask them and put on top these words which are essentially lies. I don't think... Well, they're marketing terms, they're, they're forms of sim oversimplification to make something sure. comprehensible. But, but, okay, so we're going to probably end up going into the, into the <laughs> conversation of neoliberal, oh, conversation. Neo, <laughs> neoliberalism and, and, and wider politics in today, but I think we should probably just drink some wine for a minute. <laughs> yeah. But this, this wine in particular is utterly fantastic. Mm. This is insane. This is uh, not what I was expecting either. Um, mm. that, that is like, if you would put that in front of me, I would have picked it as old world. I would have gone straight to Jura. Sure. I would have gone Chardonnay base. I would have gone, it's been uh, ulliged for a number of years I, with some good good oak, a really sort of deft use of it, but th it is present. But do you know much about this wine, how it was made or? Yeah, so um, it was exposed to oxygen uh, during fermentation uh, and that is exactly how Travis makes almost all of his wines. He allows them to be exposed to oxygen so that later in the process, there's no issue with They're oxygen. Far more resilient. Um, they, they often resilience talk, is a good resilience. Word. They often talk about in Jura where they yeah. say make the juice friends with, with sure. oxygen, it's going to be friends with it as yeah. wine. Mm. You know, because quite often we actually misunderstand when something oxidizes, the, mm. the wine's gone off. Yeah. You can actually still get drunk on off wine. Sure. You'll probably end up throwing it up quicker yeah. than you, but you can. It, it's not the actual <laughs> alcohol no. that oxidizes, yeah. it's everything else. Yeah. Uh, but all the wines Travis makes are essentially made one particular way it's part skin and stalk, part skin contact. Uh, and part direct press, and he blends it bottling in order to make the end product. So, kind of reverse engineering whining, wine making. So instead yeah, of coming wow. into it with a particular idea, he allows the process and the story and the narrative to unfold yep. as those iterations with, between those barrels um, change. So, the it's wine incredible. comes together like a painting. Uh, as the first layer goes on, the second layer... That must, be, that must be an amazing wine. story to be able to tell people. As opposed to like the stories that are typically told in the actual sale of wine, mm. which seem yeah. so much more irrelevant when you consider something like this. Yeah, when I, when I take on a winemaker or approach someone or someone that approaches me, I think the question is, do I have a rapport with that person? Is mm. it, is it uh, can we challenge each other? Yeah. Uh, is the conversation interesting? And uh, past that, do they have that anarchistic spirit? 
is it challenging yeah. what we currently understand? And yeah. not, not, in, not in the sense to um, debunk or, 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 or make someone else look like a fool, but simply to challenge the preconceived notions. And I feel like I've been doing that in every version of my life for quite, quite some time. Well, actually, quite, since my uh, history teacher in year 11 told me to question everything. Like, that was the turning you point. You must have really liked that teacher. Mr. Poravecchio, what a man. <laughs> what a man. What a man. So how many producers do you, would you represent now? Uh, we look after five, me and my partner John. He mm -hmm. is an integral part of Sun's Dot. And, and as the name suggests, uh, also a son. So my partner John and I, um, which, well, John is treated like uh, a son to my mother, and Dot yep. is my mother, and I'm the mm -hmm. son of Dot. Um, and so, sorry, I should probably explain where that came from. Came from. Yeah, yeah. So my mum, her name is Dorotea Paparella, traditionally. Um, she was born in Italy and then came over here and met my dad and then became a marinist like I am. Yep. Um, and she's the most vivacious, interesting, outrageous person I've ever met. Not bombastic and, though. No, not bombastic. That's, that's, a, that's a crude term. I <laughs> uh, but I, I, like every day, I, uh, if I have the privilege to speak to her, I'm inspired by it. Uh, and she is that true embodiment of anarchism. She grew up in a place which was women at X, men at Y, yep. you must live this life. She yeah. married her first husband to escape essentially the village that she was living in, or this community that she was living in, and then divorced him, fucked off and went overseas. Like she quite literally <laughs> like destroyed the patriarchy in one fell swoop. I didn't know she was doing it. Yeah, which is yeah, amazing. Yeah. Like I had the privilege to go to school and learn about deep thought and uh, you know lateral thinking and this woman just did it on her own. Yeah. Doesn't mean she's not a pain in my fucking ass. <laughs> but, like, she is she is dot with a lot. <laughs> And, 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 that's, and that's like the, the biggest and most, I guess, endearing thing that you can do is, is you know, name this, this, you know, company essentially after and, you know, it's something that you actually wake up, it's a part of your, you know, part of who you are. Yeah, but it's also so, somewhat selfish because I'm stealing her identity because the idea is anarchism is pushing against the boundaries, it's um, challenging what is known and, and seeking out not just in wine but yourself what is different about you. And that's her identity, she lives and breathes it and you can't really emulate that. I'm only just um, posturing. I could never be that. So I, I read that Richard Branson gets something like a hundred million a year for the use of his name on Virgin Australia. That's disgusting. Yeah. So does Doc get, you know, a little bit of... <laughs> <laughs> a bit oh, of Beano? She's, she's, she's got an allocation. <laughs> she's, she's got an allocation of some of the good stuff. She does. Um, <laughs> yeah. to change Jay's graphic because it says Laura. Oh no! So, oh no! No, no wait, wait, let's see if we can do this on the I fly would, without the whole system crashing I and would burning. Touch you no, but we're not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's 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 fantastic because I actually made a point of making a dedicated. You know, I'm, I'm trying I'm trying my best, guys. Um, okay, let's. <laughs> That's it. I can it's my die first now. day back, guys. I, I didn't have much of a break. Uh, just my name. <laughs> That's, it. That's all I needed. Um, Jay Marin is wine queen. Sophia, chiming in. Damn Lovely right. to see your smiling face, Sophia. Um, Supersonic Total 02, what? Justin dethroned this special edition show. <laughs> just, don't worry, I think you're, you're a reigning champion, Justin, you, you, and you continue to reign uh, with love, not terror. Um, <laughs> um, why are there so many buttons done up on Jay's shirt, according to Sean Lau? One button per hour was always my rule in hospitality, and that is the rule I will stick by. Um, it's Jay, be outrageous. You're allowed to be. Um, it's I just to point out this, all Brendan with the titles, love Noah. Um, yeah, that was, that was totally all my fault. Oh boy, a bit too full on for my poor little brain to contemplate the transcendental nature of Venice communication after a big Monday of work. Well, that's, that's the beauty of wine, is that it can, it can, it can, tra it can transcend, you know, if you, you are actually after that particular you know, relationship with wine or it cannot. What are you drinking though, Christina? Most importantly, I want to know what you're drinking on your Monday because, and if you're not drinking anything, you're just on the waters, that's totally cool too. Uh, what is everyone drinking? What are you guys eating actually? I want to know how you guys are, are feeding yourselves because we've had conversations surrounding this and um, and I need more I need more recipes. I've been cooking my way through Ottolenghi stuff and it's actually, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was good fun. I thought it was good fun. It's, I'm basic, I'm basic, I'm, sim okay. I'm a simpleton. Um, I drink Forex Gold. Um, 
Nothing simple so, about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I think he gets 10 meters from just the name. 10 million, 10 million uh, from just the name. Oh, this is Scott Cutter, uh, uh, it's my lovely brother. Uh, uh, pilot oh, we're just with speaking Virgin. about your lovely um, brother, wonderful. Uh, probably more from other royals. Um, yeah, perhaps. I, I, think, I think Dot deserves at least a little bit of wine. Yeah, no, she gets lots of wine, don't worry. She's 73, we can't give her too much wine, all right? <laughs> Number off a of perch. Um, but speaking of wine, uh, one thing we do get all of our lovely guests to bring in mm. is a little blind tasting bottle, and you've brought brought one with you? Yeah, I brought something in a sock. In a sock? Could be All right, it, really. because we, we do, we are aware that blind tasting is the last remaining uh, sport on Australian television. Yeah, look, um, I don't particularly like sport regardless, but blind tasting is But this is, is probably... a good one, so we're going to enter blind tasting. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. I'm going to, Noah, would you mind? Yeah. Uh, would you, uh, it's just in the first fridge on this side. It's the only one in a sock. Mm. Uh, which... <laughs> I, I, I think we should start a company, um, wine Be socks. careful, there's an indicator just... on the top of the oh, bottle. Oh, oh, I don't yeah, want to know. I'm just going to grab that. Um, this is a really, this is amazing. Mm. Can I still get this? There's, this um, would last a number of 17, years. Yeah, it is so saline. It is so But you can get 18, I have a very small amount of 18, which is quite similar in some ways. So how are you tackling COVID-19 mm -hmm. at the moment, because you're doing something really fun. Well, I'm doing okay. a couple of things, I guess, like my life is not just wine. I have a, a, ba a background in psychology and I'm currently studying psychology and uh, working as a behaviour therapist. So um, mental health is my number one, is my number one life. Um, I live that much more than I live wine. Wine is just, I don't know, again. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what, so I guess like I was driving up the hill and I thought about how I could explain what the fuck I do and the first thing that came to me was uh, this split or this dichotomy in the things that I do. I do two things. I do mental health and, and uh, essentially a science practitioner and the other thing is wine and it's ex exploration of wine and discussion of wine and exploring mm. the soul. So those two things very clearly to me are the form and the formless. So with psychology, um, with science, we're essentially trying to map on uh, the explanation of everything. We're trying to say we can control for things. Whereas wine for me is the, is the release. There is no control. Everything mm. is formless in wine. It's discussion, it's creation, it's creativity, it's art form. And so I've been surviving because I've, been, I've balanced my life with two things that I love. And I'm just really thankful that I was able to continue those things through this virus. Like, uh, mental health hasn't shut down. Mm. Like, I've got more referrals than ever before. Um, and obviously the way in which we practice is different. Lots of telehealth, lots of communication via mm. online platform, which is somewhat hard for some of the clients I work with. Um, and wine, it's, it's not like we stop because restaurants stop. You guys out there, you still want the wine, you still want to challenge the, the notions of what is wine, you still want to have conversations with the loved ones that you have around you. Mm. Uh, and so, I guess that idea of having continuing that conversation is what inspired us to do the Thunderbus. Uh, and that's where that's where wine's gone for me. I, I, that is just the most amazing thing. Mm. Like because there's there's obviously a lot of deep like when you when you when you experience the Thunderbus. Sure, it's an experience. That's for sure. Even the name Thunderbus. Yes, much like Sophie Button herself. She <laughs> yes. a true that was experience that woman. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, obviously that's come from a place of amazingly deep thought for something that can can uh, uh, probably be be seen as being quite superfluous. Frivolous. Yeah. Yeah, but maybe that's the point. Mm. But describe, describe, because I don't think I'd do justice to how you would describe okay. the Thunderbus because it's well, wicked cool. The Thunderbus exists outside of me and Son of Dot Drinks. The Thunderbus is. The, um, the creation of Sophie Button, which is one half of Communa Buttons, yep. one of the brands I look after. Yep. Um, and the other half is Geordie Hansen. And these two people, they met on Community in APY, and uh, they were doing a tour of um, essentially uh, managing and assisting and cooking for some indigenous artists, to which were living out in community in order for them to paint and create and do what they do. Mm. And so these two people uh, like met each other and discussed um, you know, ideas regarding indigenous agriculture, farming, culture, um, winemaking, the synthesis between these things. Mm. And from that, they created the Thunderbus. 
The Thunderbus is 22 seats. It's uh, bejazzled, as you'd say, like um, Alex um, Harris, who's the artist that also did our artwork, he painted the Thunderbus and Sophie stuck jewels and like real attractive It's literally a bedazzled bus. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Anyway, um, and, and the idea for Thunderbus Road is that they take people out on a tour, not a wine tour, not a party bus, not any of these conceptions. A that literal tour. A literal tour of Pamarang Land, which is where we are. Mm -hmm. in, yep. in, in, in really in good faith, we, sh we should have. Um, Acknowledge, of course. Yeah, because Pamarang culture is all but gone. We don't have that anymore. And so. There's only two, there's two elders of Par Paramount yeah, culture. Which is, um, yeah. And, and they are, like, Paramount culture has been a, a, a number of amazing books that have been written about it. They're called the, um, the, 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 the Oka Warriors. Um, and yeah. they were one of the few, uh, they've got amazing photos, mm. um, completely like covered in hair. Amazing. Yeah. In full, and and it, was, it was subject to a lot of interest into like, because they never really left here, they were a warring nation. I don't want to make light of a really important topic, but I am mm. also covered in hair. <laughs> <laughs> Does that make me... And no, 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 but it was just interesting because it, like so, so many things that you often see sure. about, about Indigenous culture, uh, you see a stereotypical image. And mm. these were actually uh, quite robust, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well-fed, well-watered, uh, hairy people. Oh, awesome. um, and it was incredible. Uh, and one of the, the main trade routes through here, mm -hmm. in fact, uh, about 500 metres that way. Uh, indeed, that was the, the main trade route in between here and the Naranjeri. I love your connection with um, with that information and the, the obvious nature of Unicozella and an Oka Nation as a as a mm. as a larger entity. Um, that the that relationship you guys have with that, I've always respected that, and um, I really appreciate that you even uh, allow me to have that little conversation in, in there. Um, <laughs> but Thunderbus, Thunderbus, yeah. So the idea is that they're exploring the tales which aren't told, the uncomfortable truths, the uh, the elements within our fabric of society which otherwise isn't discussed, and then mash the fuck out of it with pop culture, because I guess like this is a this this means this transcends to everything in life. People aren't gonna to listen to you unless you've made it soft. Or yeah. you allow them in. I think a lot of- Approachability. And this, we may come back to this with the whole natural wine malarkey, but um, the ho that whole world is essentially saying, you're there and I'm here, and I don't care how you got there. Mm. I only care about how where we are, so come over here. Yeah. And that, that, that really just, um, it pulls people apart. And, that's more symptomatic of everything in our culture. We, we draw each other apart, we never pull each other back in. Thunderbus Road is all about allowing you to have your frivolities, which is why it looks like that on the outside. But on the inside, it's actually much more of a mission to escape that, to, to ask you why you believe what you believe. Uh, and so as they travel up the hill, they stop in certain areas, look in certain places, ask you to question uh, you know, where did biodynamics come from? Is biodynamics something that Rudolf Steiner came up with? Yeah. Or is this an idea that our indigenous people had a long time ago? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, of course. That's what Thunderbus Road is, and essentially, Son of Dot, because we have such a wonderful relationship, we've hijacked that, and we're, we're trying to get that message across in a much more shorter medium, which is delivering wine. Yeah. And, and exactly what you guys are doing here, which has honestly captured my heart quite a lot, it, it's um, trying to rip down the wall of isolation, trying to rip down the wall of mm. loneliness because, you know, the science practitioner person in my mind says loneliness kills us more than anything else. For sure. People that are lonely have high indicators of heart disease, of depression, anxiety, all these physiological things which come from... Even introverts. Yeah, for sure. As well. It's not, not like they, they appreciate loneliness more. No. Um, it's, it's, loneliness is... is well, there's board. a difference between taking time and being introverted and then um, being exposed to loneliness, these are different things. Yeah. One, one you take and one you're exposed to. For sure, for um, sure. So the th we've taken over this Thunderbus and my God, it's an amazing experience just to be on it. But we roll into people's streets, we um, deliver their wine that they've ordered or perhaps they didn't order in that street and we just wreck their street, we just ruin it. We play music, we, we smash the <laughs> smoke machine. Um, <laughs> You, ca you can't not miss us, we're just That's everywhere so but nowhere. And we deliver the wine, we set up cones, make little sort of 1.5 metre distanced uh, dancing zones, like pull people 
energetically out of their homes. Because I suppose street. you can still have a street party as long as you're distanced. Yeah, no, and we're, we're really conscious of that. You know, we make sure people are in their own areas around the street. And, you know, it's kind of like we were talking before how a good idea comes along. This, essentially, you've created yeah, yeah, a community. Yeah. yeah. And I had that sensation the first day we went out. We went out, people were coming out of their houses, waving, really partying, enjoying themselves. It's going, someone's actually trying to make a... It's almost like... I don't know, Mad Max crossed with something or other. Um, it was it was incredible, and you actually fulfilled a childhood uh, dream of mine. Uh, without you don't know this. Okay. I got an entrance song. Okay. You give people the right. Yeah. So when you order great living wines from Son of Dot Drinks and it gets delivered on the Thunderbus, they message you beforehand. <laughs> Is this right? And yeah. Request yeah, yeah, yeah. a song. Yep. Yeah. And they will play that song on arrival. Mm. Yeah, because we've lost the sense of importance. Like you said earlier, we've lost the, the delineation between time. We have none of the olfactory ideas that we once had. Yeah. And we're trying to gift that back to people just like you are. You're saying five o'clock, that's knockoff time, baby. That's yeah. you and me, we're together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same with the Thunderbus. We're saying, order some wine, fucking wreck your street, and we're gonna shock you back into what is actual reality, mm. which is connectedness, which is community. Because everything that's happening right now is not, not not normal. I mean, new normal, not normal. No, I think now is the only normal time in a lot of ways. I think we've, we've, Travis and me have been talking about this a lot and I think he said to me, the best, the, probably the best thing, I've been reading quite a bit, but this is the best thing that I've heard so far. And that is the only way to start a new conversation is to currently stop the one you're having. And so by allowing that, what I think he means is by allowing the time and, and space between that old story that we've been telling ourselves, which is geopolitical, which is financial, which is um, gendered, all those conversations we're having, it's allowed that conversation to stop. For yeah. us now to have a breath and restart a new conversation. So now is actually the only period of normalcy. Before that, it was absolutely bullshit. I want to know from you guys, because we're waxing lyrical. Firstly, we do have a blind wine to taste. But secondly, oh, yeah. I actually, I'm, I'm actually gen genuinely fascinated with this. Have you guys, I mean, sure, you've had the physical changes into your lives uh, to be able to help cope with things like COVID. Uh, and yes, Terry, that does mean I drink. I know I owe you another one as well. Oh, man. Mm. But have, have you actually altered the way that you would live your life on going after? I'm not talking about like the, uh, I'm, I'm going to be um, waking up at this time instead of this time or I'm going to be taking this route to work. Not the, not the, not the fundamental things, but literally, uh, is, has, are you actually seeing yourself in any different light mm. uh, because of this? Has, for me, I'll, I'll openly share that um, I was saying to, to Laura probably around about a week or two before this whole mess really happened, I was like, it would be really great if the world just hit the pause button for a while because it was getting a little bit too quick for me to handle. Yeah. Um, and for all of us to handle, it was just running at the pace out, out. and I, and that's that's irrespective of things like you know viruses and crap like that. This is just about information, yeah. um, and I really appreciate that. That's a, that's an awesome one. Stopping a conversation because there was also a load of conversations. We were scratching our head, going, in fact, Aaron Fenwick, his quote, same thing, the same sentiment that you just sure. shared before. Are we still talking about natural wine? Seriously, yeah. like, can can we just get onto it? It's wine. It's just wine. Yeah. Move on. What's the next conversation? What's a conversation that actually well, has, makes a lot of sense? The conversation in there is challenging the norm. <clears throat> Outside of that, it's all bullshit because natural wine essentially is telling us that we need to uh, say that one is good and one is bad. The word in itself is biased. It's pejorative. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I echo the sentiment of Brendan and uh, if you have thought um, that your life is now potentially changed or the people around you has changed, I want to hear that too, fucking hell. But also, yeah. if you haven't thought about it, fucking think about it, because now is the time, now is a gift. This is the first time in a million generations that we've had Well, we'll have this, this opportunity. opportunity. And, and the first time in everyone's lives that I'm over 30. And that's allowed me the opportunity to- Cheers to, to that. To, yeah, cheers. <laughs> um, all right, so we've got a blind tasting wine, mate. We're gonna get onto it. Um, uh, Noah, are you gonna be running the game for us? Pretty please. Do you, the game, do you know the okay, options okay. game? I do, but I, I, like I said, I don't like sports, so the boys can play <laughs> and I'll right. just observe. This I, is, only this part, is... I only decided to bring a blind wine because I, it's the rules of the It's host. the rules, it's the rules, it's and the rules. That, as, as one that respects hospitality, I will respect the rules. <laughs> <Yeah>. However, <laughs> I don't respect the idea of sport. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's, it's, more, it's, it's, more, so, it's more so challenging me. Uh, it's also cha challenging the, the um, uh, well, I mean, people like to see me fail at things. I realized that was really entertaining for a lot of things. And I learned from it. 
I feel I felt it. No, I don't know. And it proves me as a person. Sure, but this fucking me wine improve. is hectic. So. This is really hectic. Yeah. It's cool. It's like a Chenin Gewurzy thing. It's it's got a bit of age on it. Um, and I, I'm questioning whether it's old world or new world because um, I think it's really well crafted. It's it, it, this is a really tiny little wine. Uh, first off, uh, white wine or red wine? I'm going to say this is a white wine. Oh shit. Yes, it's white. <laughs> cool. Um, new world. Or? I'm going to say old world. It is old world. <laughs> That's actually the toughest one. <laughs> I was so, uh, yeah, okay. oh yeah, okay, yeah, we're well, okay. Is it the toughest one? I, I found this to be the toughest one. Uh, yeah, absolutely, oh, because, because, it, it, because it's so. Who knows any, anymore, you know? The, the blinds are blurred. Yeah. The blinds are blurred. The lines are blurred. The blinds are blurred. The blinds are cursed. All right, so what country in the old world are we? France, Austria, Germany. Damn. That was the difficult possible. Damn. Um, I want to look. I want to say it's France because it feels like Vouvray in that instance. I want to say it could be Austrian Gewurz, or it could be some. I'm gonna go Austrian. Fit the nail on the It's Austrian. Nice. Now we're stretching my wine knowledge, but we're gonna. Thank God, I've done a little bit of research. Austrian because it feels a little bit more robust than what yeah. would come out of Germany. Germany would have a little bit higher acidity. France, I just, I, I feel this is in that. Gewurzy Riesling territory more so than the Shenany territory. Mm. That's. Um, we're going to go um, Steinmark, Bergenland, or Vietnam. Ah, uh, Bergenland. It is Bergenland. Cool. Um, we're going to go to variety. Yeah. So is it a blend or is it a single variety? It's a single variety. Oh, cool. Purist, purist here, purist. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, are we awesome. going um, Riesling, Garuna, or Ooh. Welsh Riesling? Fuck is Welsh Riesling. Well, so I don't. I, I'm gonna go Riesling. It's greener. Really? Mm. Wow, that's really cool. It's, it feels almost sweet. There's like a residual to it. It's amazing. Mm. Uh, I think the real one that's actually gonna treat me up as well would be vintage. Yeah, I think like this is again the conversation of, and I'll give you a little clue. Oxidation. I think oxidation like, it presents as so many different things. Yeah. And just even the wine that we were drinking before in your shed, I think that sort of has yeah, yeah, yeah. a certain yeah. element of this as well. Yeah, 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 for sure. Exposure to oxygen, which is the lifeblood, it, it, it allows more flavor than you could ever imagine. Especially mid palate weight. You can actually see it on mid palate weight. You see it in Jura, you see it in, in this particular wine. It's incredible. So it's Gruner from Austria. Uh, yep, cool. Uh, you Vintage. look pretty good, by the way. That was good. You just... <laughs> <laughs> he's, not, he's not Mr. Big, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, apart from the Gruner thing, but yeah. It's maybe the first oh, yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was... Okay. Um, 15, 13, 11. 15, 13, 11. This has some age, man. Uh, sorry. 19, 15, 19, 13, 19, 11. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say 11. It's 13. Okay. Wow, still very impressive. What is this producer? No, this is a very cool. Oh, cool! I've not tried these before. Ever? No, never. Never, never, never. That's fantastic. Where do you, where, who brings it in? So Travis did at one point through cool, uh, through um, the cool. Uh, um, bricks. Yeah, oh yeah, that's right, bricks. Um, let's let's you guys, you're gonna have a look at this. Um, is it still available? Not this particular wine, but maybe the producer? Uh, yeah, I think someone else in Australia has taken over. I couldn't tell you the name, but I'm sure Travis could chime in and, and let us know. Um, but a big shout out to Travis Townsend because he essentially I called him, I was on a walk and we had our existential chat so much so that my brain fell out of my head. And then just as I was about to finish the conversation, I said, look, I actually have to go on this show oh, and seriously? provide a wine. Oh, seriously? What do I get? And he's like, look, I've got this from uh, my cellar. And this is something that oh, man, I wouldn't that's share so with cool. everyone. And for me, this is a, a really big extension of our friendship because this is probably one of the last bottles that he has of this wine, which to which he brought in, which marked a, a fair amount of time for him. And his, yeah. his partner of the oh, time as well. Travis, thank you so much. Uh, and it's actually, it's Travis was one of the first people that helped me play this game. Would you there believe? There you go. Um, you know, we'll be at Cork and you just, I'll just have a glass and I'll just be like, taste. Then Full you walk away. freaking circle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, then and, and then next minute it'll be something like just else kind of shoved it. It's almost coming at a different angle. It's like, taste this, mm. taste this, taste this. And it was especially because I was a wine student at the time and wine students are, I'm not sure if the, if the sentiment is actually shared at the moment, but in the, the hospital industry, quite often uh, wine students are abhorred because 
they, they come in with like a like a really dogmatic sure. view on things. And he was affording a wine student a job that uh, you know that I, I very much value. Uh, but being able to taste through just some of this, he introduced me to Yalma, yeah. and he introduced me to ah, oh, what's the um, ama oh, amazing Southern Rhone Natty producer? It was so good. Sorry, no, living wine producer. Uh, no, it was just a, a, an amazing, uh, just amazing array of wines um, that that it was just such a massive, or is such a massive uh, advocate for. Um, but uh, mate, that is that's a cracker. That is an absolute cracker. Mm. That is and drinking really well, well this right is, now. This is a really wonderful um, expression of what I call living wine as well. It's Christian Sheeter, um, their family had four generations in the winemaking game. Yeah, They've had right. these properties since the 19th century. Um, these particular vines are 40 years old. Uh, I think he is, and Travis didn't necessarily tell me this, but. Um, the reason I think he's given me this wine is because it's a, a pure example of how time crafts good wine and intervention doesn't craft good wine. Mm. These people have had the, the space and the time to think about how to make such wines and you could put this in front of any wine judge in the world mm. and they're not going to know that it has no sulfur, that it was made from bargain. Absolutely not. In fact, uh, I thought this was this was quite a surprise knowing the, the wines that are in your lineup and we've had a bunch off the back wall mm. and we can very quickly go oh this is made yeah, using uh, this sort of methodology and um but this this look at the clarity like, this feels like very yeah. conventional um but it's it's not it's no. simply not it's just really 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 good wine um yeah honestly this is this is one of the um the more amazing examples just of gruner just in general that i've ever experienced mm. That, that. Kraft was one of like for a long time they were making some of the best best Gruner I had ever had, and it, it sort of echoes some of the same resonance for me this wine. Um, mm. Do you feel that? Yeah, I feel. But obviously a, a parallel like these the, the wine worlds are totally different. But um, I think Gruner has it's got legs here in South Australia. I'm really excited about it, and that was I'm really glad that Travis picked this because I think Gruner is something we, we need to embrace a little bit more about. Well, I should acknowledge some of the uh, some of these comments because you got a lot of love, mate. You have a lot of love around town. Oh, bloody Patty Spain, Jay, you beautiful fellow. Love to see your face and energy on this show. On this show, it is our show. Um, Barry Abysmal, oofed, big bad Jay. Do you know who that is? Uh, yes. <laughs> we had one of the most amazing um, uh, Sangioveses from him the other night. Yeah, I gave it to you. Oh, really? Oh, that was, was in, in the... the yeah, yeah. Was in that the... was... Uh, and, and probably the, the first wine that we have... And both, uh, who were we tasting with that day as well? Was, was it, it a blind tasting bottle? Uh, it was a blind tasting bottle. Um, oh, that was Sam Paquetta. Yeah. Did you know, so, absolutely not. We lost it on the first go. Mm -hmm. We all thought it was Old World. Uh, and we, we didn't even pick it as San Giovanni. And that was, that, the, what was the, and Laura highlighted it. It was actually off camera. Uh, she was like, guys, do you realize that this is one of the first wines that we haven't gone, boom, it's Adelaide Hills, mm -hmm. it's Basket Range, it's this. Um, it was, oh, it's Old World because clearly this is from like, like Gamay, some weird natural gamay or something like that. that. They, they just... come from no winemaking background. These people are just that was an amazing out of experience. The air and making some of the more. And then I took it home and had like three or four more glasses. Actually, mm -hmm. done. It was a very amazing. Like that is is one of those those little wines that we've discovered that has just this this remarkable drinkability to it. I think almost anything from Baraccio, they're uh, making some of the most delicious wines in, in the world. I'd say. Uh, ben and I went on the Thunderdot bus boot to capture the journey and the sight of old couples and strangers on the street coming out of their homes she looking confused did. and delighted and dancing. Happy and connecting at a distance was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. Uh, and I've seen the that photos as well, It's it's, and I totally believe it. We literally, like when they rocked up here, um, I mean, yeah, we was totally down. That was sick. That was probably the sickest one. Experience. You were number one, Brendan. We were number one! <laughs> that was so, subject. It was, yeah, it was, honestly, it was, and I had Pony by Junior Wine play mm. that will always stick out in my mind. Uh, which, what was your song, L? You've just had it answered for you. It was Pony by Jenny White. Um, I wasn't entirely impressed, but it was a fun time. <laughs> as difficult as this time is, as much as we try to compare it to a normal, this is such a potentially progressive time. Uh, should we take advantage of it? Um, it certainly Fucking puts oath. priorities in perspective when you bring it right down to the basics and what you actually need. Um, and I totally like, like, and we have changed our entire outlook, our entire business model, our entire strategy, our entire everything. And then, and to be honest, like, you know, quite often half my day, if not more, will be spent talking about gin. Mm. And and oh, we, we we sort of reconsidered, like, what do I want to be spending my time on doing? And I was, 
both Laura and I, even a lot of the team here, we're just like, I really like wine, mm. just really like wine. Wine's the most amazing, amazing thing. So yeah, we sort of double down, we're like, let's bring wine to the people. Mm. Um, hi team, later on tonight, if you ever need a fill-in Thunderbus driver, please look me up uh, from Aiden. Um, Harry, I love the way that Jay sees wine in a much wider context. Yes, wine is just a drink, but it's also part of culture and politics. Yeah, that, and that's so true. Mm. Cult, cult, I'm a big, big mm. part of the, the sort of like, are we winemakers or are we culture makers? If you start to take that sort of 80-20 sort of perspective, and that is a little bit more inclusive of the F&B part of the industry mm. as well, distributors part of the industry, journalists part of the industry. There's sort of almost like an area that really sort of brings a lot of, um, I don't know, life to things. Mm. Well, the only, I think the only reason wine in particular is something which we culturally have grappled onto is because you can drink quite a bit of it and have a long period of time enjoying it. Mm. But I think this conversation extends more so to consumables and spaces where communities gather. It's a cocktail bar, it's a restaurant, it's a, it's a dive, it's a nightclub. All, mm. These are the spaces to which ideas are created. If you think about all of the best ideas or all the best novels, they were made in some bar. Yeah, yeah, I mean, quite often. I mean, yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty confident Elon drinks a little bit of whiskey as well. Um, but <laughs> I feel like as a society we've had a busyness as a status symbol. I totally agree. Uh, and this has led to a whole heap of problems including social isolation. So I hope that this uh, time might recalibrate us to value the deeper things. Absolutely. I mean, did you notice leading up to this how people were like wore that badge of honour of like, yeah, I worked through the night. You know, I locked in. I know uh, in the tech industry it's a massive thing to just lock in and code for like 24 hours mm -hmm. straight. You know, just to get it done. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's like a machismo to it. And it seems one of the most damaging things I think we could possibly do is to, to overwork. But is there, a, is there a, a, a distinction between work and something that you just enjoy and doing lots of that? I mean, do we call th those people workaholics if they just, is it like, I don't know, if someone took, took sort of wine out of my hands, it would be like taking a PlayStation controller out of kids' hands, mm. you know? See, no, but I think you have done the exact thing to which I alluded to earlier. It's the form and the formless. Mm. To embrace those two dichotomous relationships which exist within us, you never work a day in your life. It's sort of an extension upon that, find a job you enjoy and you never work a day in your life. Mm. It's, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's understand the two sides of our brain, or uh, well, consciousness is probably a better word, the mm -hmm. two sides of consciousness, which is the form and the formless. If you could embrace those two things and understand what they do and, and allow them to feed back into your life, then you don't work, then you enjoy the world, then you can see uh, the tree through the woods or the woods for the trees, whatever the... Wood in trees. Um, uh, <laughs> so you've done that, Brendan. Travis, I think Travis needs to be on the show already, and I, I totally agree. I would love to. I would love to. Travis has an amazing, amazing sort of outlook on life, and I, I would love to have him on here. He's one of the, the deepest thinkers, I think, in the entire um, uh, wine scene, in, in, at least in Australia, if not the world. Lo fi. Lo fi wines are bringing these in at the moment. Uh, Graminon. Lockie, how did you get that? How did you get that? He's like in my head, yes, uh, Travis introduced me to Graminon. Mm -hmm. That was that cool little southern uh, uh, Rhone uh, producer. Blew my mind. Never had a wine that tasted like cherries again. Never actually had a Graminon that tasted like that either. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it was quite, quite up and down like that. But um, no, he, he gave me this wine. It's just so accurately tasted like cherries sure. and really delicious cherries. It was like Beaujolais Nouveau and drugs. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what is that? Mm -hmm. It was like one of my aha wines. It's like, it's this thing called Graminon. The very next week, I was working with Steve Pennell, mm -hmm. and it was 2011, and it was a wet vintage. This by far, this is by far one of the coolest things I've ever done in a winery. Um, so, wet vintage, it is incredibly hard to, to be able to get grapes to ferment, you know, naturally, mm -hmm. wild, and um, uh, he was very passionate about that's the way that Grenache needs to start to ferment. And uh, we were getting so much microbial load from uh, all the, the mold that was around, um, and we grabbed, and he's like, I reckon I've got an idea. It's about two weeks before this vineyard ripens. Mm -hmm. This is a bottle of Graminon, and we, uh, from a very, very wet vintage with one of the most, uh, uh, you know, uh, biggest problems for, for Botrytis mm -hmm. on record. Problems. Problems, exactly, yeah, because you can harness that amazing flavor. But they, at Graminon, had managed to ferment this wine bone dry, wild ferment, no worries. And, um, and so we drank the bottle, Got the yeast off the bottom because it's unfiltered. Mm. Col col no, cultured it onto an oh, agar okay, plate. Cool. Then grew that up and then we put it into 200 mil of Grenache juice. And then we put that into two liters of Grenache juice. And then we put that into 20 liters of Grenache juice. Oh. And then we put it into a 200 liter tub and cultured up, cultured up. And it was fermenting like crazy off 
off a yeast mm -hmm. that was smuggled mm -hmm. in a bottle of Graminol. Naughty. Yes. <laughs> and then we poured the whole Ooh. thing into the fermenter. Love that. And that was our what we call a pied de cuve. Um, you know, essentially it was a cultured up yeast. And mm -hmm. Lo and behold, it was one of the most amazing. If you tried the SC Panel uh, 2011 Grenache, it was it was actually amazing. Bloody yeah, good. Yeah, bloody good. Uh, no, really, really cool thing. Actually, yeah, Graminon. A lot of I love Graminon. Sure. Um, totally, totally. Yeah, sponsored to by Graminon. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right. Uh, but speaking of uh, wines that you've brought in, uh, mm -hmm. Limus, we were, we were Limus, Limus, yeah, yeah, Limus, yeah. Limus, 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 Limus. Tell yeah. us about this because I've had a couple of bottles, really awesome Pinot mm. um, that I had out at uh, our friends out at Hugel, mm -hmm. uh, Josh Kleeman, uh, showed us an amazing bottle that um, that we had there. But I've not tried the Chardonnay before. Yeah, so it's not particularly Chardonnay, Chardonnay, and uh, Kayat uh, for me also embodies that anarchistic spirit. This is about ninety percent Chardonnay, or ninety-five percent Chardonnay, and then five percent Riesling um, from glacial soil Riesling. Um, which obviously lifts the acidity and, and brings the length to the wine. Alternately, it may have been the flabbier style. Um, uh, Kayat's super interesting in the sense that he, like me, is a science practitioner first, and then winemaker, wine person second. Um, Kayat studied uh, seaweed science. I think it's called oceanography. Um, but the, is that related to what Gareth studied as well? Uh, well, it was Rainbow, Gareth's, Gareth's wife. Okay. Their brother and sister. Oh, wow, okay. Rainbow yeah, and cool. Kaya are brother and sister. Right. Um, and they both did their PhD in seaweed science. Uh, the idea being that um, now they've extended those practices to their winemaking. So, um, you know, and it's, and it's not an uncommon uh, feature now, but fermenting seaweed and spraying it on vines is this wonderful antimicrobial, bacterial, antifungal. Obviously, um, like sea salt essentially is. Yeah, exactly. Like the, the, ideas, the, ideas the ideas, the ideas, been, yeah, have been there for a while. Sure, but I guess like uh, tightened up and, and and really perfected through his mm. degree, uh, or multiple degrees in in this field, he's been able to utilize that in his winemaking, and that's why Limus is is the name because Limus, um, I think it was a French Polynesian country or a, a Southeast Asian country. I can't remember exactly where he did his PhD, but Limus is the name of the particular seaweed to which he did his. PhD on so uh, much like the way I practice my business there's there's a s symbiosis there's a, a form and function these things coexist and coalesce mm. um, and he makes some of the more delicious wines once again in Australia and I would put this up against Sheeta in the sense that this it's, could mature oh for sure 100% um, and and it's got a, a elegance and grace but also um, yeah, this is really good fun. It's good for posterity, God damn it! I think it's going to be a great one. <laughs> and well, he's just an amazing man. Speaking of posterity, um, we have a lovely comment intended for you here, I believe. Oh, hello, mum. <laughs> <laughs> what did she say? I can't Thank you, me. son of Dot. I'm enjoying the one you gave me today, my beautiful son. I'll make you a focaccia. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> I think the worst, oh, that is so good. The worst thing ever was when she found the, the internet and the world because now she's just run wild on everyone. <laughs> That's brilliant. Um, Alright, so we've got another wine to try and we're going to do another quick little blind tasting and we have literally 10 minutes, oh, 12 good. minutes. Wow, that went um, quick! God damn it! I know, I know it went very quick, it always goes really quick. And of course, uh, Henry is chiming in after this uh, with Applewood, so uh, we've got to keep on time. We don't want to keep him uh, and his guest waiting. Um, but. Monday night is junk food wine night. Mm, 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 mm. Delicious. Um, and we have, this has been waiting for a while. This has been waiting for a while. Um, I feel special already. Yeah, 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 because I've been waiting to create this out. We're, we're expanding the realms of junk food wine because I know that sometimes people get stressed. They use different mechanisms to be able to alleviate that stress. For mm. some people that is chewing gum, and if they are chewing gum, they're most likely chewing the juicy fruit. Uh, we are going to be pairing wine with a uh, juicy fruit. <laughs> Just, I'm not sure how it works. Acidity, xanthan gum. I'm, yeah, I'm not texture. sure how. It's all texture. texture. We, we <laughs> may we may indeed be the first people to uh, to ever try and pair wine with gum. And I'm trying to um, not touch. Uh, grazie, grazie. The, yeah, prego, prego. Uh, and the yeah, yeah. That's what, that's what, that's what. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mm. Juicy fruit. Mm. 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 Oh, wow. Mm. Yeah. That's like bubblegum. Yeah. Mm. BC, you can give that sheet of some BLE garbage. Come on, man. Oh. For our friend here. 
Mm. Mm. Would you say that Sheeta is big label energy? I vote yes. Fucking yes, hey. yes, all right. You win, Lockie votes yes. I'm gonna say, we got some big label energy. <laughs> that was an amazing bottle. That is an amazing bottle. I'm really um, amazed that uh, he parted with it, to be honest. <laughs> I'm amazed too. Yeah. <laughs> I feel really special. <laughs> it's a nice right. time. What are we pairing the juicy fruit with? I'm actually really quite dumb. Well, I guess the idea is it's not really the wines that we have oh. open. And we should actually jump on a red and check out some. Um, I'm into it. Yeah, we'll give it a crack. But um, I'm just really wondering what could possibly go with. I'm thinking like some sort of off dry gewurz or something. I think you, I think you double down on that really bright bubble gummy thing and push the boat out. I just think no, because gewurz is such low acidity. It's just I think acid and gum. Noah's really struggling. It's just like, what is this? <laughs> it's it's not great. We're gonna steer into the bubblegum side of things. I think you want like juicy red. I think you want like almost that Beaujolais kind of level. Beaujolais yeah. Nouveau. So this is a little bit too heavy for that, but it does have that prettiness and length. Yeah. Um, Ooh. I, what I drank the other night, which was Ooh. amazing, which would go well with this bubblegum, was um, <laughs> Ar Pepe. Oh, Ar Pepe. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Um, it was one of the more delicious, and when you uh, emanate this idea of cherries, I think it was like cherries and strawberries and beautiful things. I think this would be the pairing for the gum. Anyway, this is Commune of Buttons. So Commune of Buttons is a literal commune uh, full of buttons. That's all I need to say. Dude, this is, have you tried this with the gum yet? No, is it the pair? Yeah, all right. That is so unorthodox. No, and you know what, sure. what, you know what works about this? Is actually how stemmy it is. Yeah. Like there's some whole bunch. Is it? Is yeah, this yeah, like yeah, a fifty yeah. percent whole bunch or a? I don't know the right. exact measurements. Jasper's not a very communicative person. Irrespective, it's 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 kind of stemmy, a little bit like not 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 green. It's just you know quite often they'll ferment wines uh, with whole bunches, um, and you'll actually pick up a lot of the flavour of the stems. And it's they use that this the world's worst term to be able to communicate about wine. It makes sense to no one but winemakers. Ethereal. There is a like a forest floor yeah. thing going Actually, on here, which is think really of, um, beautiful. 2019, I was doing a lot of handy stemming. All I remember Jeez. was the pain of pulling these grapes off oh, over man. and over this fucking handy stemmer. It was the chicken white. No, chicken it was like no, thing. it was like more like perspex poly something, and it had like holes in it, and we had to rub the grapes. Oh yeah. Oh, geez. So I don't know how much. Um, what happened to our little whole bunch? Of this is. Oh yeah. Oh sorry, I got that. Oh, you got that. Um, Maybe that's just the Pinot. No, so um, I'm, curi I'm curious. Can I throw this out? Yeah, please. It's you can throw it. You can throw it. You can throw it. No, I'm curious. Yeah, so, so um, Aiden's trying to go. What about Panda Panda? So Panda Panda is our. We only make about 600 bottles of this a year. Uh, this is basically our experimental off dry Fiano. And um, I'm curious to know whether or not sweetness. Um, and I, I, that is an amazing unorthodox match. And I think it's a really playful match. Um, I think I might use this. Have you seen use this? No. You have. This is you've not oh, seen yeah, this before. Oh yeah, I have. Yeah. yeah this is um the the gizmo. Yeah. Jazz. Um. Oh my god. Oh, okay. <laughs> that went quick. That went quick. Um, I, I do wonder what the rest of the bottles look like. Um, all right. So, because I want to see what um sweetness does with this. Do you have that little black glass there? You can pull out. We should. We should. We should. This is Adelaide Hills uh, Fiano off dry. Um, I have always enjoyed your Fiano from a very long time ago, almost harking back to the Gold Golden Wood days. Yeah. We stocked that for quite some time. Sure, it's not a not a bad match actually for gum. Maybe just double down. That has more of the it's actually RS. not a bad match. Um, that's I'm I'm gonna side with the more thrilling match. I, I like thrilling matches. But if you did have to go pound a pound, you would. I mean, there's only six. I mean, I'm sure there's only about 600 bottles of this too. Um, that yes. is, according to Terry, that is what we call the wine wanker. Um, the bottle uh, opener. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, that's what uh, we've christened the, the bottle opener with. Ooh. Quick fire question if there's time. Sediment in wine, do you prefer it mixed throughout at the bottom of the bottle so flavour changes with every glass, or pour it so it remains in the bottle, referring to natty, not solid wine? That's a good question. The tartrate? The, the... I think just sediment in general. Okay. You know, when sediment starts to settle out. I do remember when uh, James Erskine 
I was about uh, to say, James Erskine. It would tell, tell people to roll the bottle sure. like a Cooper's, to, especially with pet nap, mm -hmm. to actually um, uh, mix. Well, these are, the these are the digestible features of the wine. This yeah. is where the, if any, yeah. nutrients lie. So you might as and well so, And it's because it's yeast, and I think that's the really, it's a microbe that you're actually consuming, a little bit like kombucha. Um, when you talk about, say, something like um, more typically sort of cellared wines, it would be tannin dropped out, or quite, quite often if you're using a, uh, a wine that, that I want to say it's not stable, it's just what happens is tartaric uh, crystals, you know, what we call wine diamonds, will drop out. And they're completely harmless. Um, quite often people will not want to have that, that on there. I, I personally would, would probably decant off wine crystals, but I would want to taste yeast. Like if yeast has been, in fact, it's not even natural wine, well, okay, natural wine, the modern contemporary version of natural wine, there is an established style of wine, it's called uh, Sir Lee. People have been making Sauvignon Blanc Sir Lee for ages, ages and ages and ages, in very, very um, like commercial styles as well. And they intentionally leave a little bit of lees, a little bit of yeast inside the bottle. It's a part of the flavor, it's a part of the artistic sure. intent of the wine. It's not a, it's not meant to be decanted off, you are meant to mix it up. Um, but yeah, good question actually, I really like that one. Um, amazing having you back, BC and LC. Um, well, yeah, uh, LC for at least, you're, you're Laura Carter for at least. <laughs> Is he getting faster at that? I am, am indeed, Sh Sharon, I realized it is actually about the speed. It is not about uh, mm. the stroke. Um, uh, <laughs> but no, you know, it's true, it's true. It's true. I've, I've been watching and observing. There's some sort of sex ed it's, it's, class it's, it's, I was yeah. coming into. Yeah. Um, I think a harder gum match uh, might be a minty style gum. That's why I didn't choose extra. I don't think extra is deemed junk food. If I'm not even sure that juicy fruit is deemed junk food, but if of all the gums that could be junk food, it would either be this or what was the, the little pink ones? Hubba Bubba. Hubba Bubba Great. He's got a bit of well, Hubba Bubba Great. We junk food surely is just an extension of your regular meal basis, right? So <laughs> outside of that. <laughs> I, like, I, like, I love the. Um, I love just the. the, the I love you, Jay. Oh, I love you, Jay. <laughs> um, I'm really getting. Your host is getting fucked. Now is the time to, to get him to put you on TV oh, to God, make you and your wine makers famous. Yeah. Uh, have a, have another wine love. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Thanks, Doc. Um, oh my God. But uh, no, seriously, um, have really, really stemmy. Um, so, and it's not even really stemmy. It's, it's stemmy in, in, in remarkable, but it's a really good wine. Yeah. It's amazing wine. Yeah, I think it's not, it's not low acid. It's not medium. It's just like, like medium plus. It's just like, mm. you know, in that. It's a, it's a really well crafted wine. No, I think um, as far as drinkability goes, community buttons are really hitting it out of the park at the moment. I think these sorts of wines are allowing people to join in that anarchistic comment uh, and, and mm. the conversation, I should say. Um, th there, was a, there was a time there when um, Jasper was just making, you know, zero edition wine for the sake of it because that's what he believed he had to do. But then he realized that this conversation about, and this is me speaking on his behalf, I should say, um, that the addition of sulfur in some wines where necessary is pertinent to mm. not wasting, not because flavor is an issue, but mm. because the wine demographic is the issue. The yeah. punter doesn't have the same understanding that- you And know, you can't continue to do what you want to do artistically. Precisely. If, if you, and what we actually see is that, you know, a lot of people see the natural wine movement, and, uh, and that's what I'm, I'm, I guess, colloquially calling it, but um, the Which method I think is pejorative and dangerous. Well, the, the, the methodology anyway of, of being dogmatic enough to not add anything, which I think is uh, noble and righteous and, and proper, actually. Um, but I also think it is, more importantly, a confirmation of amazing viticulture and site match of a sure. great variety to a climate. Yep. Um, because we've seen... Well, that's where the wine's made. Well, yeah, well, we've seen if you can nail that, then everything else falls into place. And mm. you're making natural wine by happenstance. You're making, you're making living wines by happenstance. Sure or you can at least not have to interfere as much because you've actually figured it out in the, in the actual vineyard first. Yeah. We just happen to, in our experience, what we see is there's a lot of vineyards that have planted with great varieties that just simply can't grow there. No. And what we've done is we've interfered in the process to be able to make, make them grow there the best we possibly can because we know that we can always interfere in the cellar. Mm -hmm. We know we can always adjust the acidity. We know that we can always sulfur up something that's been machine harvested so we can inoculate later on. Mm -hmm. We give ourselves the forgiveness factor utilizing additives when if we were to take those things away we would put the innate pressure on us in terms of viticulture to be able to determine exactly what is the very best that we can plant in a particular place mm -hmm. that would allow that place to remain in relative environmental balance. Yeah, no, I think as far as conventional winemaking goes, 
Um, Unico Zella for me has always straddled the line between what is possible and what is reality. Yeah. Uh, and if you're making wine as, I think, in quoting Unico Zella, wine for the people, mm. that's precisely how you have to do it. Yeah. Whereas the wine I make, it, it, it straddles the line between dogma and reality. Whereas yeah. what they're trying to do is, like I said earlier, question the reality of to which we live, where there's a space for, but that's not the entire space. Mm. I think Unico Zello has always done a wonderful job at bridging that gap between um, zero edition wine, living wine, conventional wine, and whatever the fuck everything else is. Craft or something like that. And that's that's where we hope that we can be a really great introduction to people who, that are just getting into wine so that they can choose their own adventure mm. and feel like they've got a really sort of sound basing to be able to go, you know what, this is this is the, the vibe that I'm feeling and I want to keep going in this way. Well, this is the vibe I'm feeling, we're going to keep going this way. And it started off when we were like, you know, in our 20s and the natural wine movement was just kicking off sure. the natural wine selection theory, or natural yeah. selection theory. And they were coming at 40 bucks a bottle, but all of my mates had 20 bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they were discovering lactone rich, heavily doctored wines. And yeah. when they tried these wines, it was like a gag reflex. Mm -hmm. And we were like, wouldn't it be really funny if it was flipped around? Mm -hmm. What if these wines were 20 bucks and they would just go, oh yeah, no, I'm going to go buy like a ex producer here that is made very conventionally and they're going, oh wow, it's like drinking milk. That's disgusting. Mm -hmm. these, these wines should be uplifting and fun and energetic and vibrant. Um, and that's sort of how we started. We're like, we want to we want to be talking to people at that point in their wine journey mm. to be able to go, there's actually a different way. And See, I think, I yeah. think you, you are the embodiment of the Thunderbus in a lot of ways. <laughs> <laughs> what, I am the Thunderbus! Because <laughs> what you've done is you've, you've coalesced pop culture with um, questioning the way in which we do things. And so, you know, whack in the fact that you guys are a B Corp and you, yeah. you're, you're bejazzled. <laughs> you, know, you are the Thunderbolts. Yeah. Um, Vajazzled. Vajazzled. Um, but for me, that doesn't push it far enough. And this is why you and I probably would disagree on a lot of things. Um, I still respect you and love you, Jay. Oh, no. I mean, it's just wine at the end of the day. Wine is also but, everything. To, yeah, exactly. Because it is conversation. It mm. is community. It is the way we interact past that low bandwidth interaction of language. So I think it's much more important than just wine. But on that note, and it is much more important than just wine, there's you guys to, to cater for. And there's also Henry, because Henry I know is waiting to hit the, the stream button. Um, thank you so much guys for enjoying uh, joining us on um, episode 45, day number 46. Jay, seriously, thank you. Bloody uh, pleasure. <laughs> no, seriously, it was, I was made to get a different take on wine and a really sort of enlightened take on, on wine. It's, it's the way that I wake up and think, mm -hmm. and I try to always put a Put a filter on myself sometimes, and it's good to be able to lift that filter and actually be able to explore those different concepts sure. you tonight. With pleasure, yeah. with pleasure, Dylan. And um, of course, Jay's uh, Instagram is actually linked. Son of bot, son of dot. Sorry, Dorothy. Sorry, <laughs> uh, is linked actually in the description, so you can actually jump onto uh, his Instagram, uh, yourself and John, yes, right? That's right. Uh, Instagram to be able to pick up uh, their stuff. I know there's a few of you that have already ordered and had amazing yes, thank experiences. Thank you, Terry. I really appreciate um, it. Uh, of course, Terry. You're, you're carnage, mate. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. And if you can get your hands on, uh, I'm gonna uh, really, really spruik these uh, these wines here because these are amazing examples of, of where we could be going uh, when it comes to um, when it comes to wine in Australia uh, and indeed worldwide. Um, thank you so much. Uh, have you. a great night, guys. Uh, stay tuned for Applewood. Uh, but for now, we're out of here. Au revoir.